Good morning, everyone, and praise Malakas. Especially good morning, chat, and welcome to the Skyrim Power Hours. That's right, get ready for nearly two hours of Skyrim action. We'll pull away the curtain and show you how we build Vivek City so you'll be able to build your own ridiculously gigantic city right after this panel. Luckily for you and me, I'm not alone for the next two hours. I'm also joined by, the, by two super cool dudes, one being MCUCM, who isn't an MC right now, but it has such a nice ring to it. Hey UCM, how are you? Who are you? And what's up? Hey, uh, I'm uh, UCM, and like you said, I'm not MCing right now. Instead, I've uh, been upgraded to Peanut Gallery. Um, I have had the absolute pleasure of working on uh, uh, Skywind for the last couple of years, uh, including uh, on at least one canton of uh, Vec, the Telvanni canton, and uh, I loved seeing the progress of the Vec from start to where it currently is. I can't quite say finish, there's always more work to do, but uh, thank you for inviting me on this panel. Dude, the peanut gallery is just the place to be right now, I'm telling you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and I got another certified cool dude with me. How I knew, know of his coolness? Because his name is literally super cool Zix. Hey Zix, how are you? <laughs> Who are you and what's up? Hey, what's going on? Uh, I'm Zix. I'm one of the leads over at Skywind and I basically took this Vivic City project under my wing and uh, sort of headed it and I'm really proud of where it is so uh, I made this yeah, sort of behind uh, the scenes. Sorry. No, you're good, you're good. Go ahead. Uh, I was just reading the no audio as we now have audio. Sorry, please continue. <laughs> We're good, hopefully. Uh, I made this little uh, presentation that's not really little, uh, but it basically goes over like the behind the scenes of the entire process of, of us basically making this city. Uh, Dow had a hand in it, UCM had a hand in it. Uh, I did a lot of the groundwork and uh, I'm gonna go through basically the entire process, uh, sort of timeline format, um, and then uh, mainly just describe what the heck is going on. Um, uh, if we're ready to get started, we can. Otherwise, do you yeah, guys want to? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we should probably reintroduce ourselves because there was no audio at first. Yeah, super quick. Hi, I'm Dal, and this is UCM, and he's a cool dude and a landscaper, and Zix is like the king of Vivek City. Let's go! Yeah, right. yeah sorry for the audio issues. Uh, we're doing like a really weird streamception thing, so you guys don't have a really dumb delay, but uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to go over basically the entire development process of Vivix City, uh, starting with what I sort of call early development. It's going to then transfer into mid development, so like uh, that's where all the hard work was done, uh, I guess different levels of hard work, and then uh, late development is sort of like rounding it out basically, uh, and yeah, we'll get started. So everything basically got started in June of 2020. Uh, one of our developers, who I don't think he's on the team anymore, uh, brought in basically a completely finished exterior tile set for Vivic City. And it was a complete surprise. Everybody was like, oh my god, you know, we haven't seen this before. Where has this like been made? Uh, well, suddenly we have it. Uh, so everybody was super excited. Uh, we started like making a layout for the city and um, it was you know not exactly one-to-one uh, -one with the original. Uh, we were sort of con uh, scared uh, for like the performance implications because like uh, Morrowind, Skywind has all exterior cities. Uh, there's no load zones, right? So uh, the performance hit was potentially very very huge. So we ended up sort of uh, changing the layout from vanilla a little bit um, and yeah I remember when I first joined Skywind it was a little before this actually happened and the first thing I did when I downloaded the uh, the build was go check out the VEC and I remember just the the sinking feeling as I, I walked through all the uh, non-solid original Morrowind assets so to see the transformation that's happened since I joined is astounding. 
Yeah, it's insanely different. Uh, as as we go through, you'll see that like the whole city just changes. Like every single slide is something completely new. Uh, so after June, tada, July happened, uh, as we all know. Uh, and at this point, uh, we had like the city in. Uh, it was kind of not finished. The tile set you can see has like some gaps in it. Uh, there's no domes. Uh, the palace is just like this little crummy kit bash of other pieces that really look bad. There's no high fan, Bardow's not there. Um, but we basically finished the layout uh, of our first sort of iteration of the city. And it was at this point that uh, a lot of like the vocal devs, a lot of the active devs were sort of not happy with the direction that it was going. Uh, we didn't really like the look of the tile set. Uh, it looked very, very boring, I guess, to put it into words. It looked very, uh, very plain, mm -hmm. very vanilla. Um, uh, so we sort of went back uh, to the drawing board, so to speak, uh, and we dug up some old concepts from like 2014 done by uh, Roman Dubina. Uh, and uh, one of the images here is uh, just like a paint over of how the city could look if we used his concept as opposed to going totally vanilla style. But then why, why did you change everything? Because, you know, vanilla Morrowind is in everyone's heart. So why this looks like a completely different approach. Yeah, so we, we ended up changing uh, basically the direction of how we wanted to formulate the city uh, because it looked better. We thought uh, we also wanted to do something different from Vanilla Morrowind. If you want to go play Vanilla Morrowind, go play Vanilla Morrowind. It's there for a reason. We're not trying to like destroy it. Um, we wouldn't be remaking Morrowind if we thought it was a horrible game. So yeah, we wanted to go our own direction with it. So in continuing with that, um, one of our level designers, Meliorn, he ended up sort of taking the reins. Uh, we have a lot of like placeholder assets here, but uh, using that tile set and a couple extra pieces from uh, some 3D artists who uh, were able to get like some placeholders in, uh, Mel went and he experimented with the shapes of the cantons to make it feel more unique, uh, a little different from what was in vanilla. Uh, you can see some placeholder assets here. The uh, um, uh, Dwemer puzzle thing from vanilla is used as like domes. Uh, we have like little Lalu houses as like little separate buildings to emulate the open Canton plazas that we wanted to get accomplished. Um, and, Just figuring out yeah. the basic shapes of what we want to do before we start making custom bespoke pieces. Yeah, yeah, so we wanted to make a lot of custom things, and it just wasn't possible with the tile set that we currently had. Um, blah, blah, blah. Continuing on to August, uh, surprise, surprise, just like in June, we had another member of the team come forth with a completely almost finished tile set, which was an insane surprise. Like, nobody was expecting these assets, and suddenly we had them. So, uh, what better to do than take them and sort of experiment uh, with the level design of them. Uh, this is a really, really um, uh, rudimentary sort of experiment with it, but it lays out uh, sort of what we had in mind for uh, one, the new layout because of performance implications, and two, the Roman Dubina concepts that basically made everything more unique in general. Uh, along with this, we actually got, this is one of our domes, uh, one of our finished domes. Uh, so we were able to flesh out the city a little bit more, uh, still with a completely unfinished tile set, two of which at this point. Uh, and I think at this point, uh, like at the end of August, I would say that's when early development really stops and we sort of transition into something new after that. Uh, but first, I'm going to um, sort of go into, uh, I have these like little cutaway sections where I basically go over um, some of uh, the different areas of development. So here I'll go over concept art. Uh, Dal, did you have something to say? Yes. Did you, did you just tell everyone that basically if we threw away two perfectly fine Vivek, we <laughs> made a third one or what is this going to be? 
because I I think I found the reason why Skyrim just takes so much time to come out if that's the case. Yeah, so what a lot of people don't understand is that game development is iterative, uh, meaning that when you go to develop a game, the first thing that you create is not the final thing. So we had these, uh, they were unfinished for one, so we had room to basically decide whether or not we wanted to keep what we had. In addition to, um, uh, it, it was only the first iteration, so uh, it's nowhere near finished. Uh, we could still build upon it to basically change it around to make it something better. We want to deliver the best that we can to our audience in the best way possible, basically. And we didn't think we could deliver with what we had currently. So we moved away from that and we built upon it. Uh, nothing was entirely thrown away. Uh, so this is the first of the sort of cutaway sections. I'm just trying to give credit where credit is due. All these people are insanely good artists. Uh, I'm basically gonna show you all of the finished concept art for Vivic City. Uh, and later on you'll be able to see how these concepts played into you know making the actual uh, models and level design and etc etc so our first concept artist is Roman Dubina uh, I don't think he's on the team anymore uh, but these concepts were done in 2014 this is a really really insanely good just overhead of the city and this is really what we used to sort of take the direction of what we wanted to do for the city uh, as a as a concept artist currently, I also want to chime in how good this is. Like, ju just having all of the ideas for each canton and giving each canton like its own language, so you look at it and you're like, yeah, this is probably the Halalu canton, or this is probably the Redoran canton. It's so powerful and it's just so great, really. Uh, to add to that as a landscaper, uh, you'll see more close-up uh, concepts arts further on, but they were so helpful in working on the canton that I did work on, Telvani. Just getting the feel, getting the layout, uh, and just really bringing it to life, it was so helpful. Yeah, I, I love this concept. And basically, any time I would go to work on the models for the city, I would come back to this if I had any confusion, because it's the perspective is a little off in some places, but uh, honestly, you get the big picture here, and that's what's important. Uh, continuing on, still with Roman Dubina's concepts, uh, he did a lot of specific sort of things. So uh, as you'll, if, if you haven't already seen it in like other PR stuff we've done, uh, you'll see some of these uh, specific like uh, uh, set pieces. So things like the front gates, the city in uh, Vanilla Marwin didn't have sort of any gates. It was just like a bridge that had nothing on it that led to the city. Uh, we have a unique silt strider port which is really cool uh, we have some slum areas on like the outskirts of the city we have a wall uh, surrounding the city <coughs> excuse me uh, and then still continuing on uh, we've got some specific concepts of like foreign quarter for example uh, when when were these drawn like i had never seen them when i joined the team yeah all these were drawn in 2014 so these are all really old concepts well, it sh shows that we really use everything. It just takes a few years sometimes. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, quick question. Are we taking uh, questions at the moment? Or want to push that for later? Uh, we can push questions to when we go in-game, because we'll go and show everything off later. Sounds good. <laughs> so yeah, save, like if you have questions, questions, ask them. But we'll save them for later, if that's OK. Totally OK. Uh, these are some concepts of like close-ups of Lalu Canton. Uh, these are some concepts of Redoran Canton. Uh, with each one of these, you can sort of see uh, the personalities of the individual great houses come out. So the Lalu one was pretty marketplace focused. Uh, the Redoran one is sort of almost drawn like a fortress, right? Because they're more militarized. Uh, and then the Telvani one is sort of like blue and mysterious and it's got all these shiny lights. It's really, mushroom. really neat. This one's one of my favorites, probably. Yeah, and uh, some of these same shots, you'll actually see more or less the same things in-game uh, further on. Yeah, yeah, we'll be going in-game, uh, and it'll be super nice. If we get enough likes on the stream, we will go in-game, but <laughs> we can't promise unless we get enough likes. So, Chad, it's upon you. 
That's a lie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, these are some cool ones of the arena. Uh, the arena is interesting because the dome is actually open. Uh, that will come into play later. Uh, you can actually see the inside of the arena from the outside if you guys were to use levitate. It's super, super neat. Um, these are some of Delon and Olms, uh, some super nice ones. Uh, I'm going to try to speed through these, but if you guys want to come back to it like in the VODs or whatever, feel free to pause over any of these. Uh, moving on to a different concept artist. This is from Hieronymus 7 z uh, He did the concept for the palace. Um, everybody was sort of confused as to why we had the green fire on the palace, right? Well, it's because it was concepted that way, and we really enjoyed it. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, also moving on to a different artist, we have Lorkatash. He did the concept art for Bardao. Uh, the one on top is the completely finished one. The ones on the bottom are sort of like iterations he went through. Uh, oh. I had the privilege of working on Bardao, and I think it's, oh my god, I think it turned out so, so good. So it looked good. very good, but I love the bottom left one. Amazing. I love the bottom left one. It looks like a little Jetsons spaceship <laughs> yeah. to me. But it just, I just love, like, the final one really looks like it's a material frozen in time. You can just still feel the energy mm -hmm. of of it falling it's so beautiful oh, yeah. it does make sense also that there's actually construction on it compared to just the wooden walkways and digging out in the original because it's been there for a couple thousand years at least a thousand yeah i don't remember the the specifics of it but that makes sense <laughs> Uh, continuing on again, uh, we have some concept art from Fury. He did some concepts for like the doors that are on the palace. Uh, we wanted to bring out the regality of the palace, uh, show off Vivek's vanity because he is a very vain uh, individual. Uh, so it, he's got like the Daedric V plastered on every single door because he's showing off, hey, it's Vivek City, it's me, boys, you know. Yeah. This V doesn't stand for Vivek, it does stand for vanity, so. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Uh, Cloud Soda did some uh, sort of clutter object concepts. Uh, we haven't gotten to doing the shrines yet because they're they're more like interior things. Uh, but the gondola is completely done in 3D, and later on you'll see the 3D artist. He basically took this concept and made it one to one. I I think the gondola is gorgeous, uh, and you'll see it throughout the city all over the place. Uh, again, uh, moving on to another concept artist, Bamboo 101 did a lot of these like mood paintings, I guess, for Vivic City. He took in-game screens of the stuff, the early stuff that we had of, in like June and July and August, and he did like paint overs of it to sort of give a feel for um, what the mood would be, so to speak. Uh, I don't know if Dal has any more to say on this. She's more of a concept person, but. Uh, more of a concept person a tiny bit yeah these mood paintings are especially great i think for landscapers and for the texture artist because the texture artist still just needs to, needs to see okay do i want something more rotten down here or how how is something supposed to look at the top of the canton so this is just so helpful and they're just so beautiful they seriously if you want look at them and then go and clutter a canton they really set you in the right brain space i think i think ucm can agree on that yeah all right cool uh moving on this is some stuff that dal actually did uh she did uh the high fan with the help of mel as well uh, or or mel did it and dal i don't know which direction it is but uh these are I our concepts for doing it. sorry what was it I did scream at him while we do it, and we screamed at each other, and in the end we oh, okay. had a beautiful tob Toblerone high fame. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so these are basically what we made the high fame and uh, the palace to look like. And they're very based off of uh, an honorable mention, which is Bethesda and or Michael Kirkbride's original concept art. Um, this is uh, the original concept art, not done by us, done by like Bethesda employees at the time of uh, just some general like Vivic City stuff, uh, as well as the High Fane in the bottom center there. And uh, the palace, 
this is where we got like the original original you know idea for uh, Vivek is a vain dude he thinks he's the center of the universe right so the palace is on fire and it's surrounded by the Adric planets because he's the center of the universe you know that's what he thinks of um, uh, but you can see how we've also iterated upon it, right? Uh, we don't have the same Bardao that's in the bottom uh, concept. Uh, our Hyphane looks a little different. We have like three spires like it does in vanilla rather than five. Okay, and to go back to like the timeline, I really don't have to stick on this page for a long time, but uh, between early development and mid to late development, we sort of shifted our, our vision on what we wanted for the city. Uh, it was looking like, at the time, uh, basically a boring vanilla experience. Uh, we didn't want to have one-to-one -one what Morrowind did, uh, you know, with the copy-paste cantons that you couldn't tell apart, uh, the really boring, like, nothing on the outside uh, sort of experience. Uh, we wanted to sort of change that. Um, so between, uh, I, I think it's like September onward, we basically wanted to make, one, a new tile set, uh, with the pieces from the original two to sort of uh, make it easier for level designers to actually design the city in a way that brought to life Dubina's concepts um, as well as sort of we wanted to go away from being scared about performance we wanted to push it to the limit and if it hit that limit then scale back uh, it's a little easier to take away rather than you know keep on giving until you hit that limit uh, if you know what your limit is, then you can continue on with, you know, something better in mind. Um, so our new goals for basically our city was an easier intuitive layout. Uh, so all the staircases, for example, to go up from bottom level to like mid-level are um, on the outside. So you can actually see the staircases as opposed to them being sort of like hidden away. Uh, I know that's a giant complaint for like vanilla Morrowind players. Uh, we also wanted to make our in city like uh, our city more engaging more unique uh, and then more close to the concept uh, but this also led to new challenges like uh, i said there was a limit on performance uh, it's a heck of a lot of work to basically shift from this uh, and among some other things uh, so moving on to mid development it really started in september and it basically went on to april of 2021 so uh, in September, uh, this is pretty much when Meliorn really got his hands on some new pieces and started doing some different layouts. So you can see down in like the bottom left how the city has really changed. Uh, it's, it's a bit of like an experiment, right? As we go from iteration to iteration, we're doing different things. Uh, we're throwing things away all at the same time, but uh, it's, you know, to get a better feel for what we really want at the end of the day. Uh, as well as I want to give a shout out to Chim Shady or Kim Shady, however you pronounce that. Uh, he's the workhorse between b behind doing all these textures uh, for the city. So the the placeholder ones that you see in the bottom left, that's not him. But the ones that he's experimenting with in the top left, that's sort of his area. And he did a really really good job. Hang on, slow your horses. I'm 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 a confused viewer right now. I'm seeing clutter in the upper right corner, and but this isn't the Vivek that you made. This is just still the old two sets. So why did he even start cluttering everything? Yeah, so we wanted to start cluttering everything to sort of give like we wanted to figure out a vibe for the city, right? For lack of a better word, uh, UCM might be able to chime in on it. Um, yeah, like just uh, speaking as a landscaper, these are sort of the landscaping equivalents to those mood paintings that you saw before like for example the area with the trees and the lanterns right there i'm sure if the camera panned 15 degrees to the left or right it would just be empty space it was just just there to sort of give a feel for the area for what we might want to put there uh, oops but uh mel was the one who did those not me so i can't speak to that for all i know he made a a million miles of trees and lanterns and threw it all out <laughs> but yeah uh, the, the idea was experimentation 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 and iteration uh, that that's really the big thing uh, what you guys see in game is not the first of you know what actually happened 
Uh, so moving on to October, uh, this was a pretty significant month for me uh, specifically because this is when I really started uh, working on the tile set for Vivix City. Uh, so you can see the sort of work in progress that I had in October um, along with uh, some of the textures that Jim is working with. Uh, he's continuing on to like sort of make something really, really nice for the city. Um, the image in the bottom right is the tile set that we started with. So up until this point, that is all that Meliorn had to experiment with the city. That was it. I think it's like maybe 30 some pieces. Uh, you'll see later on that this has been expanded to probably over 300 and it's made a world of difference. Hang on, hang on. I thought you were a nav measure or maybe you're a landscaper, but what are you doing here? This is a blender. You you don't have any anything to do here. Yeah, so uh, I <laughs> Vivic City wasn't the first thing I started with, but uh, in in July I really got like this this sort of uh, I I don't know. It, it was like this. Uh, I just had the inspiration to sort of start 3D because I really wanted to help out. I don't know what it was about Vivic City that really shifted my focus towards that but I picked up Blender within like maybe two three months and I like made a mushroom I think that was probably the first thing I made like a, a Dwemer thing and then I basically started working on the city and I was the only one working on it from this point onward um, at the specifically the tile set uh, and I learned a heck of a lot from uh, some members of the Skywind team. Uh, I learned how to NIF from Mentha, uh, shout out to her. I learned how to basically do 3D from Fitted Mushroom, so, so big set, shout out to him. Um, but I, I really wanted to help out, so once I really got started, uh, November was where it sort of picked up. Um, so you can see some sort of work in progress, uh, like Cantons, uh, you can see some pieces being made here. Uh, all of the like gray blob stuff you see in Blender is me uh, basically like working tirelessly to finish this stuff out. Um, uh, we had gotten a lot of stuff in game too uh, at this point. Uh, so uh, some of these work in progress textures that Jim has been making, uh, we slapped those on some of the pieces that I had made and thrown those into the game to see how they look. Um, it's, it's not, you know, the easiest thing to make a NIF look good. So uh, this was sort of the first iteration of it and we continued it on. Um, uh, yeah. Why did, why did you cut everything into pieces? I always see everything set up nicely in Blender and then in-game everything is just ripped apart again. Yeah, so we had to, uh, at the time, we thought we had to sort of tear it apart into a tile set. Uh, for one, uh, there's a bug in the creation kit where if a model is too large and you put too many lights on it, the lights start to flicker. Uh, so we made a tile set. Uh, in addition to, it gives the level designers more creativity to use the tile set in ways that you know I wouldn't have thought. So the unique cantons that you see, like in the placeholder, the, the giant purple mesh uh, is basically like a placeholder that we threw in there to see how it looked. Uh, Meliorn, for example, he could have iterated upon what I had put in as like a placeholder to change things around. And you'll see that later too. Uh, there are tile set pieces that I, they were used in certain ways that I didn't think were possible, but Mel made it happen and it looks really, really nice. So I've also got a question. If you could go back in time and slap younger Zix around, uh, <laughs> did you do anything different? I... It, I'm kind of torn between it. The tile set really, really gave Mel room to put his creative like effort into things and sort of use things in ways that I would not have thought possible. But at the same time, it probably would have been easier now that I know there's a certain method to making larger NIFs that you know it, it gets around the lighting bug. I may have wanted to do it the other way, only because it would have been a heck of a lot easier for Mel. But uh, again, it's like a push and shove. Uh, it or a, a pull and shove. I don't know. Whatever that saying is. Um, mm, give and take. Give and take. That's the one. Yeah. That, uh, why am I so stupid? <laughs> um, 
it yeah, i wanted to leave him with creativity basically uh and i think he did a really good job with it so if i were to go back probably not i'd, I'd probably keep it the same way I, I, that makes a lot of sense <laughs> mo- uh, necessity is the mother of invention and all so yeah yeah uh yeah so november was a big month um December was also a pretty big month uh, for development, December of 2020. Uh, the the sort of morale that I gave the team in working like that quick to get that much stuff in, uh, in such a short amount of time, inspired other people to also get into 3D. Uh, for example, Gamma Metroid, he got into 3D basically because well, I, I, I don't attribute that solely to me, but uh, he got into 3D. He started working on the Vivix stuff, uh, so you can see like some clutter objects from him. He did the Arena Dome for us, which looks fantastic. Uh, he also did the planters, the street lights, and like some uh, water grates for us, um, as well as uh, I think it's Hercules and CS Bob. Uh, they did the doors, so all the doors for the city were done. Uh, by other people, uh, as well as the gondola. So the gondola is huge. Uh, it adds so much character to, to the city. It's super neat. And like I said previously, it looks one-to-one like the concept art. And props to him, because it looks really nice. Um, this, but this really shows yeah. just how much one person's motivation can just pull the whole team together and just push everything forward because i vividly remember how all of a sudden like all chats started to flare up and everyone was super interesting to just contributing something and it's, it's so nice to just see how the motivation your motivation just inf- infected everyone else along this along like in the whole team that was super nice yeah looking back at it i i i really don't like personally taking credit for a lot of things but i it really humbles me to actually see like all these people come together towards a common goal to finish out the city it uh, honestly everybody involved was such a boon to the entire process it was super nice to see it all come together and i hope you guys watching feel the same way it's really neat to see it all like piece by piece coming together uh, in December, though, we would get like a lot of these pieces in game, right? So at the time, we had I think Foreign Canton in, we had Redoran Canton in, uh, and it would all lead up to a really, really big PR push in uh, basically like the days leading up to December 25th, uh, like Christmas for some of us, for other people probably just winter break from like university or whatever. Um, but we basically teased uh, a couple images. I think it was like four or five days we teased. Uh, four separate images uh, alongside their concept arts to show that hey you know Vivic City's coming it's coming along really nicely uh, and then uh, it, at, I think it was December 25th we finally showed off like our concept for Vivic himself the, the dude so if you want to go look at that you can go elsewhere to see that how how did the community react to all of this reveal or to all of this teasing <laughs> It, it was actually really funny. We uh, the first day we revealed uh, it'll it'll cycle through, but it's the picture with the silt strider in it. Uh, it's kind of ambiguous as to where it is unless you know what you're looking at. Even though we teased this picture with Vivek in front of his palace beforehand, people were still guessing like, "Oh my God, this is La Ode, right? Or this is this is Dren Plantation? It looks so good." <laughs> it's Balmora. Yeah, exactly. A couple people just had like no idea what was going on, and then the One day other... after, we were like, "Hey, we're making Vivic City," and they're like, "No way!" My favorite bit was the uh, more distant shot of the foreign Canton. Someone asked, "Like, where's the water?" It's a really brave idea to get rid of uh, to take it off of the water. Yeah, yeah. Some people can't see the, the the trees for the forest or whatever whatever that saying is. There's water there, but it's. Th- the we front promise. of the city, right? There's got to be some land. <laughs> it's just behind the wall. <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry, everybody. Vivek's been consolidated to one canton. That's it. Yeah, yeah. When when you see things, they're work in progress, and you know it's not always the biggest picture. Uh, so to do another little like breakaway sort of section, uh, I'll go into um, uh, a lot of the people who did the modeling. Uh, so all the 3D assets, taking those concepts from the previous cutaway, 
and making them into a reality for you know the game. Um, and we'll start off with me, I guess. I don't like to toot my own horn all that much, but this is the entire tile set finished to include Bardao, to include the High Fane, to include the Palace. Uh, this is everything. Uh, maybe a couple things have been added since. I don't remember when I took this picture, but uh, this is it, basically. Um, Dude, this is, looks crazy. What's wrong with you? <laughs> There's a lot wrong with me, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought this was a really, I put this to this little time lapse together to sort of show um, uh, as you're like going through your 3D process, right? You want to save like iterations of your uh, 3D file so that you're not like accidentally throwing things out. So I took all of my saved Blender files and I took uh, like overhead shots of everything and it's sort of a time lapse over I think from October until April or March of 2021. Um, this is basically how the tile set evolved. Uh, you can see that I had built the city entirely basically in Blender to show uh, how the pieces would fit together. Uh, you sort of have to do this if you're a tile set artist, otherwise you throw your things to your level designers and they don't work. Um, Another thing you can see here is how the layout changed. So uh, in in the earlier uh, Blender scenes, you can sort of see uh, the city where it's like uh, four cantons uh, or five. If you include the palace and the high fan, it's like six cantons in height, I guess. Uh, and then we transferred it to more of a vanilla layout where like the cantons are more squished. Um, and we sort of have to balance performance and how vanilla looked. Uh, and you know a flow of the city so we changed that um oh uh, also funny thing i took the full model of the city after the fact i think it was like a month or two ago and i have like a 3d printer at home and i printed the entire city and it's it's kind of neat uh i have it sitting with me on my desk right now and it's like a crowning achievement for me it's kind of kind of cool the perfect paperweight yeah, exactly. Perfect paperweight. <laughs> uh, so I prepared a little fun game. I don't know if we'll have like a whole lot of time for it, but if you guys want to guess what these cantons are, that's what this game is supposed to be. Um, uh, I don't know. Like, if the chat wants let's to do that, if not, whatever. Again. Yeah, let's give him give him a moment and consider which canton these two could be. Yeah, what do you guys think those cantons are? If if you don't want to play the game, we'll move on. It's all good. We've already had like the the who's that? What in oblivion is right. that? That's all probably a little too much. <laughs> cue the Jeopardy music. <laughs> don't cue the Jeopardy music. We get copyright strike. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, don't <laughs> actually do that. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're worried about I'm getting like... dinged by the Pokemon company for. <laughs> Oh, nuts. <laughs> <laughs> is anybody guessing? Or not? I can't see the chat. Um, one person yeah, says it's the it's sixth it's house canton. Oh, oh yeah. You guessed <laughs> How it. did they figure it out? <laughs> Someone said Halalu. Uh, yeah, I don't know which one's first. Yeah, that's the Lalu canton. So if you guys remember Yay. the concepts from Dubina, that's what that one is. Uh, accompanied Jeez. with the cantons that I designed, you can see the... Um, uh, the street signs, so I modeled the street signs as well. One person believes that the uh, top one is Telvani. That one's not Telvani. Dun, dun, dun. That one's Foreign Quarter. It's at the front, so it's got the main gate. Uh, it's also got the Siltstrider port by it. It's also the only uh, canton that's four stories instead of three. Yeah, fun fact. <laughs> fun facts with UCM and friends. Da 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 da. <laughs> That, that. Anybody want to continue on with these? Do you think we have enough time? Do we want to keep? I don't think so. It's eleven. It's eleven forty. Um, All right. We have another. Hour. We're doing good on time. <laughs> yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. Uh, one person says Redoran. Yeah. Yeah, Redoran's on the left. You can sort of understand like the. Uh, fortress job. structure almost. It's also got mm -hmm. a lot of bridges coming off of it, so you could tell it's in the center. Uh, so yeah, good job, HH. Uh, 
The person's <laughs> guessing uh, St. Dylan. St. Dylan? No way. How'd you get that one? Yeah, yeah, that's that one. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I can that's hardly it. tell those two apart, but yeah, you got it. <laughs> and these ones, these ones are pretty easy. Uh, you can try to Maybe. guess those ones. Uh, special thanks to Furion. Uh, alongside like the Vivic project, it was sort of like a separate thing that Furion took on. Uh, he wanted to add like realistic sort of posters and flyers uh, like you would see like in the Witcher games, for example. Uh, and we're going to plaster these all over the city. Uh, as we walk around later, you'll be able to see some. Um, and you can actually, I, it's really cool, I made them so that you can interact with them, so you can click them and you can see what they say, uh, so that you don't have to translate the Daedric yourself. Uh, Fury made probably like 40 of these, and they're gorgeous, they're so nice looking, and they add a whole lot of character to the city. And I think we're trying to do that with uh, pretty much every bit of signage, that it'll be, uh, the text will be Daedric, but clicking on it will read it to you in uh, yeah. whatever language the game is in. Because we oh, are yeah. planning to do more than just English, by the way. Hey, People yeah. do think the building on the left might be the arena. You know? No hey. way. You guys Maybe. guessed it. <laughs> I don't know if anyone guessed uh, what that dude from Belgium says Telvani on the right. Oh, yeah, H that's the one. HH agrees with him. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Uh, also, Save says uh, wanted Jim Stacy for the. Uh, <laughs> Oh, we should add that one. We should tell That's Fury. That's actually a really good idea. <laughs> yeah, we should tell Fury about that one. Because I, I thought he wanted to make more. I, I, think he's in the, I was going to say, I think he's <laughs> watching right now. <laughs> so I'll still write that down, though. Yeah. All right, moving on. This last one is Olms. I don't think we have to guess that because it's the last one remaining. It, it's a box. Yeah, yeah you can, you can kind of see how like these cantons are all unique, too. That was the goal. So each one that we had is a different shape. It's got different pieces. Uh, the Ohms one, for example, has a unique tile set that I had to make. Uh, it's probably like 20 pieces that's all unique. Um, mm -hmm. And same yeah. thing with the High Fane. The High Fane is a unique piece. It's got like a unique compound in the back to encompass the Hall of Wisdom, the Hall of uh, Justice as well. Yeah, uh, so just to reiterate, yep. uh, the, the main goal is to make sure that you can tell what canton it is at a glance from a distance. Yeah, so when you guys are walking around, it's no question, that's the Telvan in Canton. That's the Red in Canton. That's where I need to go. Rather than, you know, consulting a map that came with a package of the game, right? Because that's, like, what I had to do when I was playing. Uh, this is the finished palace uh, that I made. This is the finished Bardow also. Uh, also, special thanks to Fitted. We have these really cool, um, like, uh, tribunal fists that sort of hold the uh, ropes holding Bardow together. Uh, he made that because uh, I can't really do character art. He, he made the fist. Uh, and I think these turned out both really, really well. Uh, you'll see in game that these, uh, both of these has have like gargantuan scale and you would never think it possible to be made in the engine, but uh, they look super nice, I think. The uh, textures that you see here are not the textures in game. Just yeah, yeah, these are I, these are just materials play placements. Order. Yeah, just basic colors to get an idea <laughs> at this stage. Yeah. Uh, continuing on to a different modeler. Uh, this is stuff that Gamma Metroid made. Uh, he's got a couple slides here actually. Uh, he made the Arena Dome, which uh, is sort of a special case. Um, if we look what? back, like a couple slides back, uh, the arena actually had detail of the inside uh, that you'll be able to see through the arena dome. And it's, I think it turned out pretty dang nice. Why is there a net over the hole? Yeah, so there's a net because uh, in Morrowind, players have access to levitation. Uh, that's the same thing in Skywind. So if you guys want to levitate up there, uh, you're not going to be able to enter the arena through the dome because we, if we were to do that, it would be kind of awkward. Uh, so we put a net there uh, in case anybody tries to float up there. It also keeps the cliff racers out. It also keeps the cliff racers out at night. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is more Gamma Metroid. He made the the beautiful concept that Fury had for the, uh, if you remember, the puzzle canal in uh, the palace. 
he made uh, Gamma Metroid made the greats from Fury's concepts, and they look like one to one from the concepts. They look gorgeous. Uh, he also made the planets that rotate around the top of the palace. They also look very, very good. Uh, why, why, do, why do you think Vivek does the whole planet thing, by the way, just in game? Oh, like, uh, I sort of touched on it, so I probably don't have to again. But um, uh, in in sort of our mindset, and I think that's what Michael Kirkbride and or Bethesda wanted to get across. Uh, Vivek has a very egocentric. Uh, mindset. Uh, he like stole godhood basically right from the heart of Lorcan al along with the other two uh, members of the tribunal but he's he's a very vain guy uh, so he built the palace to be enormous in Skywind's version and he has like you know his his powers of Kim summoned a flame around the palace that's perpetual you'll be able to see it around all of Ardenfell which is really awesome uh, One... And the planets too. He's basically saying he's the center of the universe. The he's yeah. <laughs> Just one other thing to point to is vanity. If, to those who've read uh, the thirty six sermons, basically the determination if a divine being is good or bad, according to those sermons, is whether or not they like the Vec. So like three good Daedra like the tribunal, the bad Daedra didn't like the tribunal. That's the only source of uh, morality to the Vec. Yeah. So he's he's yeah, kind of he's, a jerk. He's a very complex character. Uh, and if you guys haven't played Morrowind, you should at least go look up the lore on the guy. It's probably more dense than like all of Skyrim put together. <laughs> uh, this is another 3D artist, uh, Sleep G. Uh, he made the uh, dome that I basically took and morphed the shape of to fit into the unique domes that we have for the Cantons. Uh, so you can see that the Lalu one is a little elongated, it's more ovular. Um, uh, the Telvani one is like smaller, etc, etc. Uh, CS Bob, he did the original dome. So if you remember back from like the slide on August, I think, this dome got finished and we were going to use it as the like dome for everything. Uh, but we realized it wasn't really close to vanilla and we wanted that style back. Uh, so we ended up repurposing it as uh, it's the dome used on the construction on Vardau. It's also the dome used that is going to encompass the library in the Hall of uh, Wisdom uh, behind the High Fane. Uh, and as I said previously, uh, C.S. Bob also did the gondola and it looks gorgeous. Uh, Hercules did a couple variants of doors for us. So as you walk around the city, it's not just one door. It's, you know, three different doors, depending on the character of where you're walking. I think these are all super nice. Notice the triangular uh, door handles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Little Red Ghoul is also another 3D artist. She did the larger doors. So these doors, if you remember in vanilla, they would go to the plazas, uh, the, the upper echelons of the cantons. Uh, we use them a little more liberally. We just use them for larger entrances, but uh, she did the double doors. Uh, Ravada is another guy. He took, uh, I think Dal did the concept for the high fane door. Mm -hmm. uh, Ravada modeled that. It looks very, very good. Uh, so these are the doors that are going to go on high fane. Uh, one part that I really, really enjoy is uh, where you see like the stained glass. It outlines the high fane, the three like Toblerone pillars, basically. Uh, they, it looks really neat. Uh, and then Fury and Ravada got together and made the door that's on the left, which is the entrance to the palace. Uh, it looks so nice. I, I, I can't put into words how beautiful it looks. It's just so cool. Uh, and then an honorable mention to Bethesda. This is actually a retextured and a stretched out uh, Skyrim asset. Do you guys want to guess what this asset yes. is? Let's game this. This is super funny, guys. Yeah. Where, where in Skyrim did you encounter this this asset? This is Skyrim original TM. Yeah, we'll oh, give it a modified, couple, but yeah. <laughs> a couple minutes we, to see if you guys can guess. We, we first off need to wait for the delay to hit chat and then. Uh, yeah. Right, right. Someone's saying this mother. So the Northern, Northern Lions, Lions, Aurora Borealis. Yeah, a lot of northern lights. At this time of year, at this time of day. <laughs> it's kind of yeah, close. In your kitchen. <laughs> it's kind of close. Kind of close. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I don't think Aug anybody's Augur of Dunlane. Yeah, no, everyone's, uh... Both times we had scalping. Uh, the, yeah, the so... closest one, uh, Sky Vortex and Sovereign Guard. Ooh, close... that... okay, oh, someone got it. Close. Someone Ooh. someone just got it. Lost Buda Vista. The Sky and Apocrypha. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I'm surprised somebody got that. So right? next time you go oh. into Apocrypha, this one is retextured to fit the, the Vivix Palace, but next time you go into Apocrypha, look up at the sky. Uh, this asset is the sky box for Apocrypha, and we basically took it and repurposed it, and it looks awesome, honestly. <laughs> um, I also have another cutaway section here for texturing. Uh, it's very, very different from modeling. Uh, I'm basically going to give a huge shout out to these guys because without these guys, the city would look very, very boring. Um, Jim Shady is the guy who basically did 90% of the textures in the city. Uh, he's also continuing to finish some uh, currently, but uh, these ones I'm pretty sure are done. Uh, he did like the basic plaster. Uh, he did the plaster bricks. Uh, he did the painted plaster. So like the red tinted green that you see everywhere. He did the floor tiles. Um, he did many, many different versions of these with grime, uh, with uh, bricks with grime, etc., etc. This is very, very, very difficult for somebody to do, especially with the scale of the cantons that we have, because this is going to tile like. 30 times across one canton, right? So it's incredibly difficult to get something that one, tiles, because it needs to for a tile set, and two, doesn't repeat too repetitively, right? Otherwise you're going to see like the same smiley face accidentally like tiled 30 different times across the canton. Uh, big shout out to him. He's an amazing texture artist. Uh, he also did the textures for the uh, meteorite, uh, Bardow. Uh, we have a couple different layers of Bardow to show, like, uh, you know, how, like, a meteorite cutout sort of looks. It's got layers to it. Uh, Fitted Mushroom, he did the original trim texture, which in-game currently is what we have. Uh, Jim Shady is actually taking this and iterating upon it to make it look a little bit nicer, but uh, Fitted did an amazing job with this, I think. Uh, Dal did a couple textures. Uh, she adds... Uh, basically a lot of character to the city by adding these uh, sort of uh, ripped apart banners. Um, we have like those streamers, if you think back to White Run or Solitude, I think they have like the streamers that are like triangular flags. Dal basically retextured those to fit the Dunmer. Um, and then Fury on, holy moly, he is an insane artist. Uh, on Roman Dubina, sorry, on Roman Dubina's concepts, uh, there are murals, basically like painted murals, all over the cantons. And we wanted to add that feeling of like painted individualistic murals to all of the cantons. One, to help tell them apart, but two, to also give a heck of a lot more character to each canton. Um, so this is sort of like another game if you guys really want to play it. Um, you know, guess the mural, guess where these would go. So uh, where would this one go, for example? This is um, one of my favorites of Furies. I think this is the first one he did. It looks so nice. I don't know if UCM or Dal wants to chime in, if they have like a favorite coming up or something, but. I just I just motivated Chad to post a heart in the chat for Furion and his <laughs> hard work because he did <laughs> such an enormous and good job for this. Yeah, cool, they look cool so parts. good. Really do. Like, it's I mean, one I'm biased. Those... Yeah, go for it. Sorry. I was just gonna say I'm biased, having worked on the Telvani Canton, but I do <laughs> love the uh, the patterns on that one. They're they're not really depicting anything in particular. They're just sort of uh, abstract color patterns, but I I love them. Yeah, they're they're all so good. Right. And it's one of those like. You've probably seen those images on the internet where it's like the longer you look at it, the more you get out of it. You know what I mean? Or like the more that you see, like, oh, I never saw that before. In the the guy on the right hand side, there are little people like inside of his cloak, like at the bottom, and they're like doing their own little thing. like they're worshiping, I guess, or, or something. I don't Man, know. They're in like reverence or something. Never noticed that. It's so neat. Really like you, <laughs> you look at these for so long, and you're like, "Oh yeah, yeah," and then you look at it again carefully, and you're like, "Oh my god, what?" 
Fury mm -hmm. is just so good at using negative space and just surprising yeah, you. Like right. in the shadows, he hides so much. It's, <laughs> it's so good. Uh, I guess we'll continue on if nobody's playing the guessing game. People playing the guessing game, maybe, maybe not. Oh yeah, well, because we're playing a game on which <laughs> I, I think we can. I, th I think we can go forward. So we yeah. Can okay. Game. So this this one shows up on the Olms Canton. If you remember from Dubina's concepts, this is basically taken from them, uh, one to one. Uh, I think it's like Olms on the right, and maybe also on the left. I I don't know. I, I can't remember which one's the scholar and which one's the warrior. Off yeah. The top I don't of my head. Know. But there, it, it's cool. It's on Olms Canton. Uh, the one on the left is on the foreign canton. Uh, it's not exactly how it looks. I can show you in game uh, when we go, but it's supposed to be like uh, uh, a vista of the city. Uh, it's a little cut up because it has to be for it to fit on like a one by one texture. Um, but it looks really, really cool in game. Uh, the one on the right is the Telvani one. That's the one that UCM really enjoys. You can sort of get the vibe of the Telvani with the purple, with the gold, with the blue little like shimmer in there. And so really natural patterns like these vines that just so Telvani. Yeah. Like just Looks a, super a, nice. A hint for what we'll see when we're going in game, but the Telvani Canton has a bunch of like ivy growth going over, so it was very fun to sort of make those sort of match and complement the murals. Oh yeah. I think it turned out really, really well, too. Oh, thank you. Uh, these ones, I guess Lalu got a little bit of a good uh, treatment, but uh, it's it's kind of hard to see because it's yellow, but it ends up uh, looking like scales, like the Lalu scales when they're side by side. Um, and it's got some like yellow for Lalu color. Uh, blue, I guess, just to contrast the yellow. Yeah, and you also see that they really value their witches because they just use gold. This isn't just yellow, this is gold. They want to show you, look how good at being merchants we are. This, we just can plaster our buildings with solid gold. Oh yeah, so, right on. so in addition to the paint, it's like also like a mosaic because you can sort of see like the mosaic tiles like in the bottom of the left or the right hand too. That ended up pretty neat. Uh, the one on the left is pretty obvious because uh, of the bug uh, sort of motifs going on and the warrior-like motifs. Uh, you've got Redoran Canton here. And the one on the right is really neat. Uh, again, this one's sort of like torn apart because it has to fit on a one-to-one -one texture uh, or a one-by-one -one texture. But uh, it looks so cool in game. It looks like uh, the Canton is basically just tatted up, like sleeved up. You know what I mean? It's super cool. Absolutely. Uh, the arena ones are also super awesome. Oh my god, I love these. Uh, if... Ooh, I have not seen those actually. No way, you amazing. haven't. <laughs> I have not. They're or so like, cool. I haven't really focused on the amazing. <laughs> the ones in, so if you remember back to uh, Kirkbride or Bethesda, whichever did it, uh, their concept art. I, I never noticed this until I looked back, but the the Kagudi and the dude with the bow, like in the center of the top one, that's actually in that concept. So like Kirkbride and Bethesda had thought of that way back when, and Fury's just bringing that out now, and I think that's so cool. Fury's reverence to the source material is incredible, and and I love it. It certainly yeah, shows. It's amazing. Uh, this is also one of my favorites. Uh, it mm -hmm. is based heavily off of, again, I think a Kirkbride art, but uh, we basically made in front of the High Fane, we have like a prayer wall where people can come up and just lay people, like sit there and um, uh, blah, 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 like put up their uh, uh, prayers. I, I don't know what the heck it is. Uh, I don't like they come up here and it's basically a spot of reverence and they sit in front of it and I don't know you'll see it in game, um, but it looks super cool. Place of worship, leaving offerings, things like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think that's the end of our last cutaway section that I'm really going to focus on. Uh, heading back to sort of the timeline. Uh, sorry that this presentation is running really, really long. Uh, if we're going too slow i don't know we're, we're gonna hop in game we're here fine. pretty we're soon we're super fine on time we're super yeah, fine it, on time. it's Don't only worry. been an hour there's still a, another hour i guess 45 minutes okay cool yeah. 
Uh, chat, if you're bored, we'll play some more games or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, chat, if you're bored, <laughs> you can like the channel more so we can go in game sooner. The more yeah. likes so we get in games. This is a total lie, but I still want to <laughs> say it. <laughs> we can still pretend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, January 2021, it was the turn of the new year. Uh, it was pretty dang nice uh, for progress. Uh, I had basically uh, gotten everything um, uh, sort of blocked out in Blender. Uh, not everything got in game, but we got it blocked out in Blender, so I was able to sort of start thinking about implementing it. Um, uh, you can see how we sort of moved from uh, closed cantons to open cantons. Uh, so we've got like uh, some different tile set pieces in order for like Mel to put them in to depict the open cantons rather than just the boring vanilla experience. Uh, you can see one example like in the bottom left hand here with it actually implemented. Um, I also started implementing Fury's murals this this month, uh, at least attempting to, uh, and uh, a lot of the extra bits and bobbles started getting in as well. Uh, I think this month like Gamma Metroid really popped off and he started getting things done like the Arena Dome, uh, the benches around the city, the planters, etc, etc. Uh, and also Lorkatash finished the concept for Bardao, which was super awesome to see. Super awesome. How close were you to finish the whole city at this point? Uh, at this point, I think we had everything except for the unique cantons in Gam. Uh, which isn't saying much because uh, that might be just foreign quarter and Redrin Canton, uh, but we were getting pretty close to actually implementing things. Uh, yeah. Uh, moving on to the next month in February, this is where uh, Kim or Chim, however you want to pronounce that, I think Chim Shady because of the song. That doesn't that make sense? Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the real Jim Shady. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, he went crazy this month with uh, texture experimentations. Uh, some of you guys might like some of these, and others of you might like others. Um, this is, again, part of the game design process. We have to go in iterations. So he went basically step by step to say, hey, does this texture work? Hey, does this texture work? Hey, does that texture work? Um, and all of the ones you see here aren't the ones that made it to the final. Uh, so that just goes to show you how much work was put into it and how dedicated the guy really was. Um, I think I was probably too hard on him in development, but he pulled through every single time. So I owe massive thanks to him. Otherwise, this never would have gotten done. Uh, you can see really how far he went with the cre uh, like creative texture experiments. He made like a sandstone one. He made like a, a old English town, like Cobble Road, which was pretty neat. Um, I think that was really all I had to say about this one. Oh, I, I guess if you look at the Blender scene, like it's basically, this is the month where we sort of changed the layout more towards like a vanilla style. So we cramped the Cantons back together as opposed to stretching them out. And it made all the difference. It makes the city actually look like what it was supposed to be. Uh, yeah, as well February, as a bunch of things February, getting put in, like the arena and stuff. Yeah. February was super interesting also for the team because Jim basically gave us a whole new pack of, of textures each day or each second day to install and check out <laughs> and, you know, to discuss. Um, yeah. But besides that, I noticed you, you, you guys started to add walls and towers to the city. Uh, that's really new. We, Vanilla Mo uh, Vivek City didn't have any walls or towers, so what's what's going on there? Oh, yeah. So if you're a purist, sorry, we added walls to the city because Dubina had them in his concepts and we thought it was really nice, so why not? It just makes sense. Uh, even though Vivek has the power to, you know, smite an entire planet at his whim, uh, he wants to also protect his people, you know? It could be from like slaughterfish, it could be from like raving bandits, who knows? Uh, but there are walls awesome. around the city now and it looks pretty dang cool. I think. Also, back in the day, he wasn't always present in the city. Like, he would go out on campaign, go out, you know, that's where all those, uh, yeah, that's um, true. Relics and stuff that are in various towns around the, around the island. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. It's only very recently he's been stuck in his palace. Yeah. It also, um, uh, going back to like the performance implications of the city, uh, the walls also help add occlusion 
to certain areas. So if you were to be outside the city, uh, if you were looking in the stuff on the inside, like most of it wouldn't be loaded uh, and vice versa. So if you were standing on the inside of the city and looking past the walls, most of the stuff outside really wouldn't be loaded if you were standing nearby the walls. Uh, yeah. I realize that's probably not really going to yeah, happen often because the walls are kind of far away, but it helps a little bit. Every little bit helps with something this dense. Anything that we can yeah. spare your GPUs from having to, to render only to be blocked by a wall is, yeah, a, no is a bonus. So, <laughs> occlusion, just a little behind-the-scenes look, I guess. Occlusion is super important for keeping things optimized. Oh, yeah. Uh, continuing on, March, I think, was the month where I think I finished everything, and I got it put in-game. Uh, like base city tile set wise. So um, if you were to look at these images like uh, Tavani Ken, it's done, it's in game. Uh, Arena Ken, it's done, it's in game. Foreign Quarter, it's done, it's in game. Oh my god, like the city is actually coming together this month and it's insane to see it come together. Uh, as well as I started working on Bardao. Heck yeah, it, it was such a pleasure to work on Bardao. It's such a cool concept. And, uh, oh my god, it was something like I had never done before. It's really neat to, like, carve out the individual, like, ruts in the meteorite and make the sort of detail that you wouldn't be able to with just plain flat walls, right? Um, and I guess uh, the other thing that got in was, like, the high fane. So the high fane finally got in. Uh, the palace finally got in. And uh, along with that, uh, the picture that you can see, for example, like on this slide right now, uh, we put some placeholder LOD in. Uh, LOD standing for um, uh, something I can't remember but uh, it's basically like the long draw distance uh, stuff so the st stuff that you see in the distance that like would fade out as you get closer in so you could be standing uh, let's say uh, like at the peak of Red Mountain on a clear day and you can see the city for example if we didn't have the LOD and the city would be completely invisible from a distance so having that placeholder LOD, even though it's placeholder, not completely finished, um, it looks amazing. It, it does so much wonders. Uh, moving on, I think this is like a really cool comparison. I just slapped it in here. This is Dubina's concept art. This is the finished city, at least at the time of March. Uh, and the comparison, I think, is <laughs> for lack of a better word, pretty dang good. Pretty dang good. Uh, as you can kind of tell, we had to make some compromises, like Talvani uh, in Dubina's concept art, for example, doesn't have any connection to anything. So we added a connection from Arena to, to Talvani for you know quality of life, because we don't want people walking like a mile just to get there. Um, and one reason we do that is also, uh, Talvani doesn't have all the say in how their canton exists if they yeah. if they had their way they'd probably replace it with a giant mushroom but you know they don't own the canton they they lease it long term for like a thousand years from from the temple so they only have so much control over how it looks and how it's constructed yeah that's that's the funny thing that people don't realize like you see all these crazy mods for morrowind that like Oh, it adds like the mushroom towers to Telvani Canton. Well, the temple wouldn't allow that because it's going to destroy the infrastructure of the building that they own. So the temple owns the entire city, right? Uh, all these great houses, whatever, they're just, like you see him said, they're leasing these things out. So in order to keep, like, um, you know, the city grounded in, you know, a. a, a the more a samey feel and grounded in lore you know everything's designed the same architecturally uh, but we were able to add character to the individual cantons by you know street signs by uh, the murals mm -hmm. for example the murals do a ton a ton a ton a ton to differentiate the cantons between one another also just in terms of realism my my personal take was the temple would not allow anywhere that a ordinator couldn't get to on foot if they needed to, except Bardal. Yeah, yeah. So one thing that was actually scrapped in development was a levitate pad on Telvani. 
So if you if you can sort of look at the tail binding canton right now, it, it might be hard to see because you can't see the backside. But there's no way up on the exterior to get from like lower level to top level. Uh, so what I had thought of originally was, hey, let's add a levitate pad because that's pretty Telvani, right? Uh, well, no, I, <laughs> I was shot down pretty quick by a lot of the lore geeks out there, uh, and, and I saw the error of my ways after the fact. Uh, the temple wouldn't put a levitate pad in there, and if they did, why didn't they do it throughout the rest of the city, right? Um, so we ended up scrapping that. Uh, you're able to get... Uh, through to the top level of Telvani on the inside, uh, but not on the outside. That's another like interesting thing about that one. Yeah, Telvani is the only one where the traditional Morrowind rules apply in that instance. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I'll say that's missing from this, uh, one, the textures aren't final, of course. This was taken back like somewhere along the line in mid-development. Uh, Bardao is also missing from this one. Uh, and you'll mm -hmm. see next month... Uh, I finished Bardao, uh, but in addition to this, uh, Meliorn actually came in, and now that the city was done, he actually started giving it, like, uh, for lack of a better word, good vibes, I guess. Uh, he started actually detailing the city uh, in at, like, a base level. So in the open cantons, he started putting in, like, the individual taverns and stuff, uh, the individual, like, shrines and things. Uh, we started putting in the water grates and everything that gives the city r really that, like, flowing feel. Uh, here's a couple images of Bardao. Uh, I think it turned out really, really nice. Um, and it actually has that like imposing feeling, right? That there's a, basically a nuke hanging over the city at all times, and the god who's leading the city could drop it at any time. Uh, B.S. Morrowind, looking at you guys, it's it's a sad day to see Scathing Bay every time. <laughs> <laughs> where's uh, the yeah. Where's our danger potato? <laughs> Big danger but potato. I do want to point out though that in some of these early drafts of the external areas, just how the clutter tells a very important story. Just like a a boat dock that's not you know perfectly aligned with the dock, how there's empty crates, barrels, just random detritus just hanging around makes it actually feel lived in. There wouldn't be you know there's no army of cleaners keeping this place spick and span. Maybe on the top levels and where the rich people live, there Hell would yeah. be. But down in the canals, there's um, nothing. It's just whatever. If someone sets something down, it stays there. Yeah. So it makes it feel very lived in and that people are just there day to day, walking through and walking around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, seeing things come together like this is so nice. Uh, and you'll see it even better as we continue on. Uh, that is the final slide for mid-development. I'd, I'd like to call like this time period mid-development. You can sort of see how things have evolved from September. We have those placeholder experiments, right? It looks <laughs> pretty okay, J just okay. Uh, and then by the time you know March, April comes around, you've got a fully realized city. Uh, oh my god! Like uh, holy crap! It's so awesome, so awesome to see the progress. I think. Um, uh, yeah, go for Mr. it. Ziggs, just just to to inform you, we have thirty minutes left, and the chat is getting unruly. So just, oh boy. just let you know. Oh boy, they're, they're oh they boy. Get unruly is a strong term. <laughs> they're, they're getting a bit impatient. Okay, so <laughs> let's skip through these pretty quickly then, if you guys are okay with that. Sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, so the base design of the city, this is like base level design, like first pass, sort of like how things are shaped, where buildings are placed, etc. This was done mainly by Meliorn. Uh, I helped him out with this, I guess, just because of the nature of like the 3D, right? We had to plan out how the city was. Um, these are a couple of, well, I guess there's like one, uh, there's one reference image that Meliorn had used a good bit. Uh, we wanted the canals to actually feel lived in somewhat. Uh, so we used Venice, uh, Venice, Italy, for example. Uh, and I think there's like a city in China also, I think, or Shanghai, somewhere around there, um, where we used as reference for basically these canals because they're cities like on the water. So perfect example. Um, these are really cool designs by Mel. 
uh, continuing on, we have like a bunch of really neat dock designs. Uh, there's a lot of docks here, as opposed to in Vanilla Morrowind, where basically the cargo is magically like somehow in the city. There's no docks whatsoever. Um, uh, Mel made these like cargo cranes to get um, uh, cargo from the docks to like the upper levels, uh, which is really really neat. I think it adds a lot of character. Uh, if you guys have watched, like, uh, th this is probably like a super weeby moment, but if you guys have watched like Attack on Titan, uh, the the Japanese animated series, uh, we had taken like just... some inspiration from that. These cranes are basically from that show. You can just say anime, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to trying to be formal, you know, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then he also wanted to add some tarnished areas, right, to give it some character. Uh, there are some, you know, pretty dang rich people living here. There are also some pretty dang poor people living here. And to make it feel like a city, you know, we've got to have some of these ruined areas. Um, the one on the left is probably the best example. The one down at the bottom, I think we've taken out since we don't really want to leave a shipwreck in the city the entire time. Um, and then there are some busier areas as well. Uh, shout outs to Dal. She really enjoys the beer garden kind of vibe of the one on the right hand yeah. side. <laughs> this is why it's good to have a lot of German people on the team. So he has always a good supply of beer gardens in every city. Yeah. It's super nice. Uh, these areas will be like the more busy areas. Uh, the one on the left is one of my favorites. It's like a little sweet roll stand right outside the arena. <laughs> pretty neat you can go get your you know popcorn and watch a show too it's pretty awesome uh he also added places of reverence uh this is going to be really out of left field but if you guys have played morrowind and if you've played the mod tamriel rebuilt uh, they have a city called necrom uh, we took heavy inspiration from them basically to sort of fill out some of the empty areas of our vivic city uh, their city of Necrom has dotted all over the place, uh, places of like reverence. So if pilgrims were to go there, they would be able to pray at the shrine of uh, the Sharmat, for example, or the shrine of um, uh, Nerevarine has, has a shrine over there. Uh, we've added shrines to like the major saints uh, as like little offshoot buildings from the Cantons, just to give it more of like a silhouette and stuff. Uh, shout outs to the TR guys, if any of them are here. That mod is amazing. If you guys play Morrowind, please play that mod. It's so good. Um, and this is just to continue with like the places of reverence and stuff. This is an example of, uh, I think the one on the left is basically like an area of where pilgrims would walk uh, in between uh, St. Olm's and St. Delin Canton. It's not really going to be cluttered all that much because it's kind of like a place of, you know, you would walk uh, with reverence up to the high fane and then you would sort of pray at the prayer wall uh, with the beautiful mural done by Fury there. And it's so awesome. It looks so cool. Uh, also, uh, some of the open concept plazas uh, we've included. Basically, I think there's only one canton that's completely closed. And that's it. I think that's only one. And I think it's the arena, really. Everything else has like an open top to some degree. Uh, even Redrin has like half of its plaza on the outside. I mean, even. Uh, the arena is a little open, like around the yeah. corners, sort of. Yeah, I hesitate to even say that because you can see it from the outside. True. I don't know. We'll we'll see it in game. Yeah. Uh, if hopefully I don't run out of time. Uh, and then these are some more of them. Uh, we've got like Telvani on the left, uh, Foreign on the bottom. You can see the Mages Guild, Fighters Guild, uh, just like it was in Morrowind. Uh, and then you've got Lalu on the right. You can see it's you know open as well. Uh, also, fun fact: Crassius has a stage uh, for his plays. He didn't in Vanilla Morrowind, even though it was mentioned like several times, or not several, but like one or two. Uh, he has a stage now. So if somebody really wants to join the team and you know script some plays, come on down. <laughs> Why not? Is there any uh, three-legged Guar fans out there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good one. <laughs> Live on stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, oh, yeah. this sort of brings us into late development. Uh, there's not too, too much that goes on here because basically everything was done. Uh, a lot of the legwork that was done here, uh, and it, it sort of brings us up until like now-ish. 
Uh, a lot of the legwork was sort of like some scope creep things, uh, some final touches, uh, just little extra bits and bobbles we wanted to add while Chim Shady basically was finishing the textures up. So up until this point, the textures have been like different every single time. It's going to continue until you know we actually go in game and show you the final ones. Yeah, I think it's time to go in game to be honest because we're the time is running, dude. If you think so. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, just just a few last ones. Uh, in July and August, uh, Daddy Smurf, uh, that's a funny name, Daddy Smurf, uh, Mel, and in September uh, and October, UCM also joined, and we actually got some kick butt clutter going uh, on the cans, so it actually brings it to life. Uh, UCM talked on clutter previously, but it's it fleshes important. out the city a whole heck of a lot. Uh, and that brings us to basically last month. Uh, I finished this presentation last month. Uh, at the time, Jim Shady is basically finishing up the uh, redoing the trim texture to make it look a little uh, better, as well as I got bored of 3D and started doing some clutter myself. Um, and that basically kicks us into the end of late development. And instead of going through this whole boring section, I'm going to go in game and show you guys for real. All right, here we go. Here we go. Yes, Give me yes, yes, two yes, seconds yes. to swap over. Okay. Intermission. Du, 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 du. Um. Here we go. Oh. Are we alive? This is a quick intermission. You we are live. I think we are. Nice. Live. Okay. Hi everybody. I'm Zix. Welcome to my TED talk. Ooh, look at this clothing. Ooh. Ooh look at this mix mixing and matching. <laughs> Uh, so this is where the chat, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to, if you want to, I'm going to go over there from here, from the Silt Strider port, we're going to do like a Twitch Plays Pokemon kind of thing. If you guys want me to go left, go left. If you guys want me to go right, go right. If you want me to go to Bardow, say Bardow. If you want me to go to Hyphane, say Hyphane. Start nine. Et cetera, et cetera. This is basically a bot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, this is where we can take like Q and A and stuff. Yeah, if you guys want to ask questions, a few, feel I, free. I collected a few questions. I, I would start reading. Yeah, awesome. and I'll I'll trade off with you. If you guys can also kind of guide me, I can't see chat. So yeah, yeah, yeah we'll <laughs> do that too. Uh, one person says backflip. I yeah, can't backflip. Back <laughs> Dude, I can't. If I could, I would. No way, what a disappointment. I hope everyone likes the uh, loading screen too. Yeah, it's not a final loading screen. Furion did the final loading screen. Dude, this outfit is just amazing. It's killer. Yeah, I would love to go. Also, if you want uh, a different weather, this is like the clearest weather I could find. It's not that Keep great. But... Yeah, it works for where we are. So, I have a first question. Uh, Zix, Lord Zix asked if you could post your 3D print in Discord later, like in the public chat of, of the city. Uh, if you want me to post it, I can. Yeah, I think that's what they want because that's where they, where they ask. Uh, give me a second, these quars are trying to kill me. Oh no. Oh no, look at the menu. <laughs> and deleted from existence. Sorry. Uh, one person says go up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, and then hit start. Yeah, I think that's a Sega code. <laughs> Wrong engine, dude. <laughs> um, someone else asked, so Skywind is a mod upon release. Will you allow people to have access to it to make their own mods for it? Uh, upon yeah. release, you guys will have it. I mean, yeah. there's no way we can stop you from having it, right? <laughs> yeah, just do it. Uh, um, we won't stop you. One person asks, any player homes for the city? Oh, that's been talked about. Um, it's so we're making it like Morrowind, right? Where you can basically, uh, real quick, uh, shout out to the posters. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, that right? one doesn't work apparently. Uh, but yeah, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, it's going to work like Morrowind, where if you murder the dude, you get to keep his house. Uh, if you can survive the, the, the you know, criminal uh, penalty. Um, mm -hmm. But we've also talked about potentially there might be like a player home in St. Delon or St. Holmes kind of because it was like empty-ish. 
There wasn't mm. much to do there in vanilla. Someone actually just said, what about the one in St. Dellen that was empty? Just yeah. now chat. We can go visit the, there's like a haunted mansion in um, Olms. Uh, that is actually really, really neat looking. Uh, one person's also asking, like maybe in a little bit, uh, if we can see the city at night. Yeah, let me... We don't have to do it right now, but... Do you have caps lock on, dude? Uh, someone else also asked if we are going to use only original music, and yes, we are. Like all our music is made by our amazing uh, musical artists. Also, all our SFX is done by our art amazing sound artists. So yeah, that's that's all original content. Uh, HH is asking, uh, go to the Mages Guild. Oh yeah, that's I was actually just walking that way. <laughs> you were. <laughs> First things first, I'm going to skip over the Mages Guild for a second. Uh, another question, will all cities be completely open, like Skyrim open cities, so Levitation and so on doesn't ruin them? Yes. Yeah, right? It's yeah, all like the cities way. are going to be open. Yeah, we're Levitation factors into a lot of our decisions. Um... Okay, so real quick, this is one of Fury's murals. Oh yeah, this is really nice. It's supposed yeah. to be a vista of the city, right? Yeah. It looks super nice. Uh, and now I'll go to the Mage's Guild. Uh, let's see. Uh, some people are asking... Is... No, you oh, go now? Yeah, uh, someone's asking if we're going to have uh, followers in Skywind, like Quality of Life Edition, or is it going to be like OG Morrowind and I... I personally have no idea, to be honest. I don't believe that's in the cards at the moment, but sort of going with the uh, other question, you know, Skywind is a mod, upon release will you allow people to have access to it to make their own mods? Yes, so please, uh, yeah. make your own followers. I... Make, make Inigo for uh, Skywind. Oh yes, please do that. I, I will download that mod, definitely. Uh, some people have asked to see uh, the Green Flame and Bardow. I figure we can Hit those oh, yeah. at the same time. Yeah, so here's the Mage's Guild. We... Just to um, point that we out. Don't have, we don't have the inti insides yet, right? Correct. Yeah, so if people are wondering, the interiors are... I'm currently working on them, so we don't have those yet. The only things that are missing from those are textures. Otherwise, I'd be walking inside of them mm -hmm. for you. Uh, <laughs> Midget Alien. Asks what key features from Skyrim will we see in Skywind, i.e. followers, housing, shouts, etc. Uh, as Zick said, for housing, it's mostly going to be on the same you kill it, you buy it system. Ooh, look at that shot. Um, that distance there. Um, followers, we don't have plans for at the moment, but again, you know, this will be open source for anyone to make their own Skywind mods. And as for shouts, those are being repurposed into... Uh, so in Morrowind, if you had enchanted items, you could activate the spells that they're enchanted with at will. Uh, uh, these uh, shout systems basically been repurposed for that. Same with like uh, magic staffs. You can That's check in our Discord uh, one of the last videos which Termo posted, I think, and he did yes. show how he's going to repurpose the whole shouting system, so it benefits us in a different way. Yo, look at the danger potato up there! Watch out, it's going to fall on your head! <laughs> <laughs> I'll change it back Hot to nighttime potato real dropping. Quick. Yeah, nighttime is also so beautiful because uh, at this point all the lights have been played, so it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Also, I made those moons. Beautiful moons. Um, Eddie, the best guy, uh, is asking if we're going, if Skyrim's going to get its own modding section on Nexus, and I can only say we have no idea because we don't know what Nexus is going to do. So yeah, we kind of have. We hope so, though. No idea. We hope, yeah, sure, that would be great, but no idea. This is another mural by Fury. It looks it. gorgeous. You can see the people like in reverence at the top. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's a green fire at the horizon. 
Oh, one of my favorite oh, NPCs is up here. I don't, um, so... The Arintel is asking if it would be possible to bring characters from Skyrim over to Skyrim, and that will... Uh, I don't think that will be possible, because we're breaking the game, so, thoroughly. <laughs> yeah, one, one thing to note is Skyrim will not exist in the files of Skyrim. Like, it's... It's separate from most mods. It's much more like Enderal, where it's technically kind of its own. It's its own game, effectively, and will have its own separate install from Skyrim. Uh, Frying Pan, you can just ask here in the YouTube chat, and we are reading along and picking picking questions from here. So, just ask away. Uh, somebody wanted to see that and the palace rig. Uh, yeah. Okay. Will you just change dragon models to cliff racers? I think they're on the same level of annoying. Currently, that's what they yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Currently, that's actually the case. But we do have uh, a good animation department, which is working on giving every creature we created their own unique animations. But currently, indeed, cliff racers are dragons. Uh, Leo, Leo says it's so beautiful. I'm gonna cry. It's not a question, but I just want to say good. Your tears nourish us. Also, Bro, if anybody yeah. was concerned, check out <laughs> the fog. The fog is nice. Yeah, the fog is nice. It's so foggy you can barely see the city if we go up to Bardow right now. It's kind of spooky. It's like you're on, it's... in your own void up there. Silent Hills, mm. uh, sirens mm. are about to, to blast. I want it to be daytime. Uh, there will be spears, yes. What do you want? Don't murder her. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, Frying Pan asks, Alright, here's my question. Will there be heavy rebalancing compared to Morrowind? AKA, will there be some mega nerf to broken things such as alchemy? Uh, we are definitely planning to not uh, keep certain exploits like alchemy. Like the alchemy stuff in game. Like, I mean, obviously there's still going to be alchemy, but not quite what it was back then. Uh, alongside that, we, ha we have a question. Does your team have a template for problem solving based on the XP you gained along the way? Uh, you mean like better? Well, we don't like know. If you have <laughs> yeah. Um, the thing if is you guys have questions we, about Vivek, we can answer those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honest, oh, somebody just was, fell from the rock. Oops. Oops. Uh, balancing uh, wise, we, <laughs> we just don't know yet what we were going to do balancing wise, but we're going to have quests when you have like persuasion high or intimidation, then that's going to reflect in the quests, of course. But just generally, the balance system, we haven't even gotten started on yet, that one yet. Will there be a dice rolling combat system? Uh, no. Nope. Will all the NPCs be fully voice acted, or will they be silent like in more Oblivion? Every NPC is going to have full voice acting. Yeah, if you were able to hear it, I don't know if you could hear it, but the invisible guy I talked to down there had voice acting fully implemented. This is bar now. The Beautiful. are not done, no. Uh, Codex asks, what is your personal favorite place in the city? Uh, I'm biased. I like Telavani, because I did it. We can go to Telavani next. I haven't been there yet. I have to admit, I really like the shanty town outside of the city, ah. just because I like these really dense, uh, cluttered pet places. Oh yeah. Well, that's that's fun because the uh, shanty town is right beside Telvani. Oh, that's true. Well, let's go. Also from, like, also from up here you can From up here you you could see how uh how distinct each canton is just in its shape. Oh yeah. This is just to show you that interiors have not started yet. Because I but don't have any but the tile sets have been started, right? I'm done with it. I just need textures. That's all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have a guy working on them right now. Yeah. So 
Someone also wants to see the arena. So. Let's go, it's on the way. <laughs> yeah. All right. How really fortunate. It's on the way. Holmes is up here too. I'll, I'll stop by the Haunted Mansion because somebody mentioned that. Oh yeah, do it. Um, a few more questions that we have uh, sort of in the backlog. Uh, Project Reckoning asks, I saw spears with custom animations in Skywind. Are there any other weapons that are going to get custom animations as well, like throwing knives, etc.? Uh, yes, we do have uh, throwing weapons now. Darts, throwing knives, we can even show them off. Yeah. And all, every, every, oh god. Pretty sure all, all weapon classes <laughs> will get custom animations, so don't worry. This will so this is the Haunted cool. Mansion. Ooh, so creepy. You have to get in here by... Oh, this way, if I can fit. Oh, I'm scared. Uh, Mr. X is going to show up. Isaskar asked, what sort of work have you been doing to make Vivek easier to find your way in? Um, um, I guess the obvious answer is every canton is unique now. I mean, there'll still be some level of you know, learning the environment, but that's the same in any city. Yeah, in, every in canton world, is life. As well as all these staircases aren't like tunnels inside anymore they're on the outside so you can see where you can actually go up like you can see very clearly that there's a staircase right there as opposed to there just being like a tunnel that leads ambiguously some direction Inquity is asking if you could change the weather again uh yeah to clear i guess oh no it's not there by the way, Dix, just because he said he really wanted to do the the credits, if you want to start name dropping, because in five minutes our time is sadly over. Alright, uh, oops. Let's keep it this weather, and then I'm just gonna speed up uh, to show everything off. So this good. is the arena, it's super cool. The murals are kind of kick ass. Uh, here's the net on the arena, so we keep people from going inside there because this we just want people to see You're, there's not actually going to be like NPCs or anything but it'd be super odd if it was just a black void mm -hmm. uh, Talvani's over here UCM if you want to chime in on how you did this uh, well okay sure I um, so like we said we didn't want a giant mushroom sticking out of everything but there's still the blue coloring that Telvani sort of uses, sort of cooler colors, plant growth, um, some mushrooms and, and planters kept well in, uh, under control definitely needs to factor in. Um, you can also see sort of a, a respect for where certain areas are facing. Uh, so, for example, the sides of the canton that are facing uh, the wilderness or just open water aren't really as well kept as the parts that are facing the city because the Telvanni, though they do like their isolation, they're very vain. So, you know, they want to be respected from a distance. Look, but don't touch. Yeah, one of my favorite fun facts about Telvanni in our version is, uh, so if you remember, or maybe you don't, this is basically the home of a Telvanni wizard, like a master wizard. And using Marwin's mechanics, if you murder this guy, you own his house. He's the only house on this plaza, so you can basically own an entire top of, of Vivek Canton if you really want to. Why, why would you tell them? Why would you give them <laughs> that information? Complete with little side gardens. Yeah. Someone's uh, also asking if you want to open the map, but I'm not sure if that's going to be so exciting. <gasps> Uh, the map looks really ugly right now because the 3D map is disgusting, but if you want me yeah. to, I can. Yeah, fun fact, that 3D map is uh, uh, auto-generated. We don't, you know... Yeah, we're not going to keep that in the final game. Do you mind opening it? So, oops. You oh. discovered a lot of places, man. Yeah, the 3D map isn't really optimized for Skywind, so it looks weird. And yeah, the we're not keeping this. Look this looks weird. disgusting. Yeah, it does weird. 3D map is very bad. Like I said, it, it's 
auto-generated. Bethesda didn't make their original one. And we didn't intentionally make this one. It's just what the what the system builds for us. Yeah. So this is the shanty town that Dal was talking about. This little slums area Daddy Smurf did. Super nice, even though there's a shirt clipping right there. Oops. Yeah. Also, important trivia, this is the only place with a toilet. All over Vanto. Yeah. Very important trivia. I don't Very remember important. where it is. Oh, here, here it is? I don't know, but maybe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the I can't sit. <laughs> oh, we absolutely need to add the invisible <laughs> chair markers there. I thought there I were think he there did. at some point. Oh, yeah, I guess N NPCs would use them, but we couldn't. Yeah, yeah. Baby guars. And on that note... <laughs> uh, just to finish things out, I'm going to go back to this. Um, oh god. Oh god. Hopefully you guys can see this on stream. Uh, just to finish things out, uh, if there's any questions as to what's next, uh, that's a great question. Uh, there have been concepts for the interior designs. I have basically finished the models. Uh, we're just waiting on textures. And whenever that gets done, you guys, best bet, there's probably going to be a sequel to this presentation where I talk my butt off some more about how I made these. <laughs> Maybe. I'm excited, I to, I'm excited to peanut gallery that one, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, aside from that, I'd like to give... A, huge round of applause round of thanks to all of the skywind team that helped me with this helped the greater project with bringing vivic to life it's holy crap it's been probably one of the greatest experiences i've ever done um just seeing something so cool come together with so many people working on it is awesome and uh yeah thanks to the fans for also keeping us going because without you guys the project would you know fall apart we, motivation to keep going is what gives us, you know, the drive. Um, uh, also, big thanks to Bethesda. Uh, credits to them for the original city. Uh, also, we have some fun memes in these last little bits if you guys want to have fun. Uh, fun. Big credits go out to all of our concept artists. Uh, gotta love these memes. Dwayne the Rock is Bardow because it's a rock. Haha. Uh, shout outs to Fury for that one. <laughs> Uh, all the 3D artists, credits <laughs> go to them as well. Uh, a lot of great people here. Um, also, credits go to the texture artists. Without these guys, uh, we would fall apart. Uh, mainly, Jim Shady. H holy crap, like if you're listening to this, big thanks to you, big shout outs to you. You're a great guy. Um, and also shout outs to the creation kit designers you guys are killer too holy crap you guys are awesome uh i think that's it yeah. uh yeah that's yeah. about it uh, thank you for your presentation thank you yeah, audience thank you. for uh, being here with us yeah thanks for paying attention thanks for sticking along with me as long as you did my voice is horrendously awful um but, All uh, right, everyone, and now stay tuned to the implementation panel where you will be able to hear Zix again. Yeah, stay tuned. I'll be back, suckers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got the implementation panel, and then what else we've got after that? We've got uh, uh, the, writing, the, writing the writing panel. panel okay, today, yeah, we've got the writing, the writing panel. Contest. And then I think so. the BS walkabout then, after that. I think yeah, so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah we're really into good. this, obviously. Yeah, I, yeah, sorry, yeah. I hadn't memorized well, the schedule for today. <laughs> First of all, tired. Really stay, stay tuned for the implementation panel, and Six is going to jack a lot of rods on the next 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, thanks, probably. everyone. I guess we're out now. Thank you. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you guys.